Once upon a time, there were two brothers from Cambodia who loved playing football manager. One day, they saw a competition run by an English non-league football club that promised to give one lucky fan a staff role at the club. Brothers Chan and Sam Nang both entered the competition and incredibly, Sam Nang won. Working at the club was great, but he wanted more. He wanted to be a real life football manager. So he put some feelers out and eventually Welling of the National League South gave him the job. Back in Cambodia, Chan didn't give up on his dream of being a manager too. And after coaching various youth teams, he was given the chance to manage Survey Rieng FC, which is quite a coincidence because I am wearing their shirt right now but more on that later on. So now the two brothers are competing to be the best managers in the world in a race to the top. Chan is more of a people person, whereas Sam Nang is more of a motivator. But attributes don't matter, trophies do. So by the end of their careers, who will have won more? Well, Sam Nang achieved a ninth place finish with Welling in season one, way above where they're meant to be. But Chan can only manage a fifth place finish with Survey Rieng who were expected to win the title. However, he does win some silverware, as Survey Rieng lift the Cambodian Super Cup at the start of the season. However, things go downhill in season two as the club just avoid relegation, but they keep their faith in Chang. As for Welling, they also drop down the table, but only to 12th place, which is still a very respectful position for the club. It looks like Sam Nang at Welling is developing a vertical Tiki Taka style of play in a 5-3-2 formation. His brother, on the other hand, favors a more conventional Tiki Taka style, going quite attacking in his 4-3-3 formation. However, after a poor start to season three, Welling sacked Sam Nang, leaving him looking for a brand new job. His brother, on the other hand, still has a job, but after another poor season, Sebei Rieng finished in seventh place. And with Chan's contract expiring in just a few days time, it looks like they're not going to renew it. So heading into season four, both of our brothers are unemployed. Now you may be wondering how on earth I've been able to get a Survey Rieng shirt. Well, I was sent it by Sangalo, who partnered with clubs from far-flung leagues around the world to sell their jerseys in markets they wouldn't ordinarily be able to reach. The club have ambitions to get back into the AFC Champions League. So every time you buy a shirt from Sangalo, it goes towards helping that team achieve its ambitions. They currently have the most capped player in Cambodian national team history, and former Canadian international Marcus Haber in their ranks as they currently sit top of the table. So I'll leave a link to Sangalo in the description. Go check out the website. They've got a bunch of new shirts and some shirts that are still on sale. So let me know down in the comments which shirt you end up getting. So after Chan left Survey Rieng, he decided it was actually a good idea to go and join his brother in England, where he joined Kingsland Town in December 2026. And he took them to 10th place in the National League North. But his brother had quite the year. In October, he was announced as Oldham's new manager. But by April, he'd guided them to relegation from the National League, which saw him get sacked. What a wild six months he had. Then, frustratingly in season five, Kingslin lost in the National League playoff to Oldham, who got promoted at their expense. Sam Nang, on the other hand, managed to get the Rochdale job in the National League. He took them to sixth place, which is a playoff spot, but they lost in the first round to Maidstone. If things had gone differently this season, both brothers could have added a promotion to their CVs. And season five might have been the chance for Kings Lynn, as in season six, they drop all the way back down to 14th place. But Chan does keep hold of his job. The same can't be said for his brother, as after a good first few games of the season, a dreadful September saw him lose confidence of the dressing room and get sacked at the end of the month. Six seasons in and he's already been sacked by his third club. In season seven, as the Linets finish in 12th place. And although that's respectable, the board might start with thinking they need a change if they can't push for promotion. Sam Nang, on the other hand, seems to be more ambitious as he's now taken over the job at Tranmere. But after joining in February, he saves them from relegation in League 2 and finishes in 20th place. In Season 8, Chan is still at Kings Lynn and making steady progress up to 11th place, 
but he is really falling behind his brother. And that's because Sam Nang took Tranmere to a playoff spot and won the whole thing, beating Cheltenham 1-0 in the final to get promoted. So next season, he'll be a League One manager, whereas his brother is still in the National League North. Whilst Chan is still in charge of Kingsland, dropping down to 16th in the table, he has stability. Sam Nang had a horrendous start to life with Tranmere in League One. It took until December, but the board eventually got fed up and sacked him. But that might have just been because he lost the confidence of the dressing room. Less than a month later, he took over at Sheffield Wednesday, also in League One, and got them relegated. Finishing two places above Tranmere, who also got relegated which basically means he got two teams relegated in one season. Quite the achievement. But you would think that Sheffield Wednesday have the budget and the stature to dominate League Two. Well, it took until March, but Sam Nang was eventually sacked for once again losing the dressing room, as Sheffield Wednesday finished 17th in League Two. Chan, on the other hand, takes Kingsland to 11th in the National League North. It might not be glamorous, but at least he has a job and the board seemed pretty content with mid-table finishes. But as a quick peek behind the curtain, I gave both managers identical hidden attributes. They both have 20 out of 24 ambition, so they try and climb the ladder as quickly as possible, and they're also not very loyal, with the idea being they move clubs frequently to make the video slightly more interesting. But so far, Chan is the complete opposite of that. So heading into his eighth season at the club, once again, Kings Lynn are slap bang in the middle of the National League North table. But again, at least Chan has a job because Sam Nang is still unemployed. He hasn't found another job since being sacked from Sheffield Wednesday. However, in season 12, we have some seismic news. On December 3rd, Kingsland Town sat one position above the relegation zone and the board didn't like it. So they finally sacked Chan and he is free from the shackles of East Anglia. I could not be happier for him, especially as a few months later, Bradford City swoop in and he helped save them from relegation in League Two by three points. What a hero. Sam Nang, on the other hand, has gone to East Anglia and in October became the Cambridge manager, who finished level on points with Bradford and one place below them. We finally have two brothers battling it out in the same division. So in season 13, Chan is able to take his struggling Bradford side up to 11th place. But Sam Nang struggles at Cambridge, who score more points than last season, but finish lower. Solo, in fact, he was sacked early into the season. But at the end of the season, following the departure of Wrexham's manager, he's been given their job. So inherits a team that finished ninth this season in League Two. Surely both managers are going to be gunning for promotion next season. And Sam Nang gets it, guiding his Wrexham to an automatic promotion spot. Chan, on the other hand, is desperately unlucky not to win the playoffs, losing to eventual winners Sheffield Wednesday 3-2 on aggregate in the semi-finals. And the hangover from losing it in that way led to Chan being sacked by Bradford early into season 15 when things didn't go well. That's twice now he's lost in the playoffs. Imagine how different his career could have been if he'd won those games. Well, he may have also been sacked too, just like Sam Nang was as he couldn't get Wrexham firing in League One. But another League One side saw his potential and Rotherham hired him in February as they eventually finished 16th place in League One. So he remains a League One manager. Well, not for long, but only because he was headhunted by Oxford United to become a championship manager for four months until they finished 24th in the table and got relegated. But that is slightly better than Chan, who is still without a job after being sacked by Bradford. So in season 17, back in League One, Sam Nang was able to guide Oxford back into the championship, finishing second in the table, except he isn't the manager. Michael Turner is. Sam Nang was actually sacked in November for poor league position, 
the poor position was seventh place, which I feel is incredibly harsh by the Oxford board. But their loss is Wimbledon's gain, as Sam Nang guides them to 11th in League One. Chan, on the other hand, dropped down a league to become the Chester manager, and earned them a promotion to League One by finishing second in the table. So once again, we'll have both brothers in League One next season. However, Chester got relegated and Wimbledon didn't do much better in 16th. Sam Nang does keep the Wimbledon job, but obviously Chan was sacked and is now once again unemployed. And he stays unemployed throughout all of season 19. But his brother Sam Nang improves Wimbledon and they agonizingly miss out on the playoffs on goal difference. Even more annoyingly, it was Mansfield who picked them to sixth place and they got promoted. But in season 20, something crazy happens. After a less than ideal start to the season, Sam Nang gets sacked as Wimbledon manager. And then he gets replaced by his brother, with Chan taking over and not really doing much better, as he took the Dons to a 15th place finish in the league. Sam Nang, on the other hand, makes a huge leap forward to Burnley, who are actually rubbish in this universe. They're also in League One, finished in third place and lost in the playoffs. So two decades into their careers, although they've both had promotions, the only bit of silverware they've won between them is the Cambodian Super Cup. But they're now both 50 years old, and whilst their attributes have dramatically improved in that time, they've only had half a season of championship management between them. We need to see an incredible rise from them in the next 15 to 20 seasons, so by the end of their career, they've actually won some trophies. In season 21, both brothers have now been sacked by Wimbledon, as Chan lasts about 14 months. But his brother does one better with Burnley, finishing in second place and getting automatic promotion up to the championship. The following season, they have a respectable finish of 14 as they look to build them back up. Chan, on the other hand, has got himself a new job with Stockport County, who also happened to be in the championship and this season finished in sixth place to qualify for the playoffs, but lost 5-2 on aggregate to eventual winners Crystal Palace in the semi-finals. Stockport, by the way, have had an immense rise and have even had three seasons in the Premier League. So all of a sudden, both managers could be on the cusp of managing in the Premier League or not. Chan was sacked by Stockport in October, where to be fair, they did have a pretty poor start to the season. Sam Nang, on the other hand, has left the Claret and Blue of Burnley for the Claret and Blue of West Ham midway through the season. The Hammers had been relegated from the Premier League last season, and this time finished eighth in the Championship, just outside the playoffs. In season 24, they improved to fifth, but lost in the playoffs. But Sam Nang wasn't in charge. He'd been sacked in December when the club was only mid-table. They only actually made it into the playoffs in the final three weeks of the season. Chan still hasn't found another job, so both brothers are unemployed. He also stayed unemployed throughout all of season 25. But Sam Nang jumped ships to a big club, Everton, who are also in the championship and 13th placed at that. It's great he's getting jobs at all of these fallen giants, but he can't revive them, which isn't great. Still, it looks more likely that he's going to reach the Premier League before his brother does. Well, that was before Chan took the Brentford job ahead of season 26, following their relegation from the Premier League. It turns out he was waiting for the right job because he guided the Bees to the championship title and back to the Premier League, becoming the first of the brothers to reach a top European division. Except, he wasn't. Midway through the season, Sam Nang left Everton to join Nottingham Forest, who are in the Premier League, at least until he couldn't save them from relegation, and he got sacked. But by half a season, Sam Nang beat his brother to be a Premier League manager. He actually said the reason he failed at Nottingham Forest was because he wasn't subscribed to the Tom FM channel. So if you don't want to end up like Sam Nang and getting relegated, make sure you subscribe. Chan is subscribed and he was able to keep Brentford up in the Premier League, finishing nine points ahead of the relegation zone in 16th place in season 27. Sam Nang, meanwhile, is still unemployed. 
But then he does something that Forest fans will never forgive him for. As in season 28, he only goes and joins bitter rivals Derby County, although he can only guide them to 16th in the championship. And in the Premier League, Brentford ended up getting relegated, and obviously Chan was sacked in the process. So not a great season for either of the brothers, from the highs of the Premier League to the lows of unemployment, and even worse, 16th in the championship. But Chan isn't out of work for long, as he becomes the Reading boss and misses out on a championship playoff spot by two points. Derby improved to 10th, but Sam Nang isn't the manager. He's done something very different. He's become the manager of Senegal, and will be trying to win the African Cup of Nations and World Cup for the country. He inherits a side that sacked their last manager for losing the 2051 African Cup of Nations final to Morocco. But that does mean he's got a very good team at his fingertips. Another peep behind the curtain, but the other four big five leagues have been available to manage in. I left the lower leagues of England available so we'd be able to follow these two brothers' careers more closely but I thought by now they would have branched out into some of these other leagues. But no, the first venture away is Senegal. We'll catch up with him every two seasons during the African Cup of Nations. Chan, on the other hand, has left Reading because he was headhunted by Birmingham City, who are a Premier League team and just finished in 15th place. Not bad going. Next season, they improved to 13th place, but of course, Chan isn't there. Instead, he's headhunted by Leeds United, who finish one place and two points behind Birmingham. I hope he knows what he's doing. Meanwhile, Tanzania hosted the 2053 African Cup of Nations, and Sam Nang has guided Senegal to go one better than last time and win the entire tournament. The best part is, this is Sam Nang's first ever trophy. It only took 31 seasons. But even better, the next trophy that he could win is the World Cup. And they actually make it to the quarterfinals of the 2054 World Cup. At least England can finally get revenge against Croatia for knocking them out of the 2018 World Cup semi-finals. Back in the Premier League, and Leeds have just finished rock bottom of the table, and Birmingham in 13th. So the gamble hasn't paid off. In fact, he was sacked in November, joined Swansea in January, and then got them relegated from the Premier League. So just like his brother in season nine with Tranmere and Sheffield Wednesday, Chan has got two teams relegated in the same season. He does stay at Swansea though in season 33, and they just miss out on a playoff spot by a couple of points and have to watch rivals Cardiff get promoted instead. Back in Senegal, Sam Nang decided to leave the Senegal job and join another international team. Ghana. And he only goes and wins back-to-back -back African Cup of Nations with two different teams. Even better for him, Senegal got knocked out in the second round, so he chose to jump ships at the perfect opportunity. It turns out Sam Nang is an expert in international management. Early into season 34, Chan gets the boot from Swansea. But finally, he follows his brother's lead and leaves England, joining Lille in France to keep managing at club level. Here, he misses out on European football by a single point as Lorient pip Lille to 7th place and that Conference League spot. With no international tournament in season 34, it's a quiet year. But in season 35, and I can't quite believe I'm about to say this, he wins his third African Cup of Nations in a row as Ghana batter Morocco in the final. Six seasons ago, both managers were neck and neck with their careers. But now Sam Nang has streaked ahead with three international trophies. But that could change soon, as Chan gets Lille into four fourth place in League 1 and qualifies for the Champions League next season. So will Chan be able to catch up by winning three Champions Leagues? Well, both managers are now 65 years old and are approaching retirement age. So actually, will there be enough time for Chan to catch up? Well, Sam Nang won't be adding a World Cup to his trophy cabinet yet. Despite a disappointing early exit from the 2058 World Cup, Sam Nang has built up enough favour with Ghana to stay in charge of the nation. Lille, on the other hand, dropped all the way down to 14th in League 1. But 
Chan wasn't there. He actually left Lille in summer to join Schalke in the Bundesliga, who are also in the Champions League. They did lose in the round of 16 though, the same stage that Lille lost at. But after finishing fifth in the Bundesliga, they qualified for the Europa League next season, which they must be thinking they can win. But sadly, they fell just short losing to Juventus in the semi-finals, but it was a tremendous effort. They also finished sixth in the Bundesliga, so can have another go at it next year. But the board wanted more. Chan was sacked at the very end of the season because they didn't finish in the top four. That is incredibly harsh. As for Sam Nang, he's about to take part in his fourth African Cup of Nations. And the absolute letdown loses in the final. I mean, three in a row is good, but it's only impressive if you can win four in a row. So heading into season 38, Chan decides to stay in Germany and joins Cologne, taking his squad to second in the table, but finishing 10 points behind Bayern Munich. It's another non-tournament year for Sam Nang, so we have to wait until season 39 for some action, which he gives us. Taking Ghana to another AFCON final, but loses for the second time in a row. Clearly, his magic touch is gone. So a few months later, at the age of 70, he decides to retire after managing 17 different clubs and countries in a 39-year career. Chan, on the other hand, continues, and this time he's only nine points away from the Bundesliga title, but sadly gets knocked out of the Champions League playoff round. But he does guide them to the DFB Pokal title, claiming technically the third trophy of his career after the championship title with Brentford and Cambodian Super Cup with Sevey Rang, but we'll call this his first major trophy. Over summer, he decides to head back to France to become the PSG manager, and on the same day as joining, wins the Trophy des Champions, basically the French Community Shield. So I don't think we'll count it as a major trophy. Naturally, he also guides them to a league untitled, which is certainly a major trophy, and he's now one behind his brother. Then in season 41, he goes back to back with another league untitled, but then decides to head back to Germany in season 42, joining up with Borussia Dortmund and winning them their first Bundesliga title since 2012. Bayern have won 36 titles from 42 seasons. Kaiserslautern were the first to overthrow them before Hamburg, Darmstadt, Schalke, RB Leipzig, and now Dortmund. But do you want to know the best part about this? Chan then retires from management aged 72. I like to think that he just wanted to, one, beat Bayern after they pushed him into second place at Cologne on multiple occasions, and two, win one more major trophy than his brother did, with his now three domestic titles and one domestic cup. So overall, Chan managed 1,544 games, winning 689 of them, equaling out to a 44% win ratio. Sam Nang, on the other hand, only managed 1,153 games in his shorter career, which had less games due to being an international manager for a decade. He won 470 games, which equals out to a 40% win ratio. So stat-wise, Chan comes out on top, and he did have more success at club level. But to win three African Cup of Nations in a row and then make the next two finals but ultimately lose is seriously impressive. So for me, based on that, Sam Nang just had the better career. But let me know what you think in the comments below. So if you enjoyed finding out about the careers of Chan and Sam Nang, I think you'll enjoy this video. We turned back the clock for Paul Pogba so he could start his career again at 17 years old to find out if he could be even more successful the second time around. So go give that one a watch and let me know what you think.